Hey everyone, Brian Summer and Vinny Merchandani once again for the Burning Platform. Hi everyone. Obviously you can tell I'm here in Milan, Italy at the Duomo Cathedral. And, uh, and that begs the question, how come we can't ever get our software vendors to create products that are as global and globe trotting as we are? So Vinny, why don't you kick off the conversation? Tell us uh, what kind of issues you see out there right now. Well, Brian, first of all, it's good to see you getting into Bitcoin. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, me and cryptocurrency, we're like that, man. Um, Brian, I mean, this, this has been a, a, you know, an ongoing issue, right? Cloud vendors have been around for 20 years, and it's frustrating how few countries they support. It's almost like, you know, you, we, we, we support Canada, we support Mexico, and what else do you need? Um, you know, I've, I've talked to them about manufacturing keeps moving with middle classes, right? Getting closer to the middle classes around the world. So people are interested in manufacturing in Malaysia, in Vietnam, in Slovakia, in, you know, around the world. I mean, we, we've needed functionality around the world. The software vendors have trailed, have kind of not kept up. Um, yeah, and I'm sure you look at a lot of HR and financial vendors, it's the same thing, you know? We've talked about global payroll for how long? <laughs> so, yeah. So, let's acknowledge one thing, and fairness to the vendors, and usually they're my favorite, you know, whipping boy here. Uh, I know it costs a lot of money to get set up and operational and viable in different countries. Um, depending on the CEO I've talked, I've spoken with over the years, they look at anywhere from 30 to 50 million in some cases in every country that they go into. So I, I understand it's expensive, but even before you think about setting up a sales office and a marketing arm and all that kind of stuff in country, just to get the product ready, uh, let's just kind of make sure the listeners understand what has to be there. Not only do you have to have all the compliance, the regulatory, uh, stuff in place. You might have to be able to uh, support different tax and other filings. So you have to have the ability to print all that kind of stuff and it's got to be right and tight. Uh, there's languages, dialects. Uh, there's uh, a whole, there was a whole book. It's on my bookshelf here somewhere on uh, all the things you have to format for currency, postal codes, addresses. There's a ton of that stuff that has to get done. Brian, I mean, you and I have done a lot of global business. I'm not, we're not going to, you know, we can't trivialize it, but this has been done before. The legacy vendors, oh, yeah. you know, codified a lot of the taxes and so on. And accounting firms keep up with this on a daily basis. So, you know, getting that input is not that difficult. So, you know, I, I understand what you're saying, but once you open up a certain market, it's not just the multinationals local businesses become customer prospects, right? So, you know, you look at the market opportunity, the investment usually pays off. And then, you know, I talked to Zoho. I mean, it's incredible how they look at where the demand is coming from by just looking at website patterns. And they've developed capability for Nigeria and, and Dubai and so on without necessarily opening up big major sales offices, right? So the world has evolved a little bit, and I think I think we need to be a little more demanding of vendors when it comes to that. Uh, well, let me keep going because the to me the 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 punch list on what you have to do over there continues to grow. If you're going to be in a country, you're going to need a sales organization, and you're going to need channel partners, implementation partners. You're also maybe going to need some software partners that have some critical extra functionality that needs to be bolted on and integrated to your product to make sure it works well in country. Now, I agree with you. Um, I don't, I'm sure you're, you've been to 70 or so countries. I've been to dozens myself. And um, it seems like we're able to operate and run our businesses quite globally, uh, if you will. And uh, yet it is interesting to see what a struggle that some of these vendors have. I mean, I, I, I would also tell you that there's some other problems that are coming up that are newer ones. And I want people to be 
aware of this. If you use, if you're looking at a software product or an analytic tool that uses some kind of facial recognition technology, you need to know that uh, a number of those tools don't necessarily recognize differences in people's color, or if it's on voice recognition, they don't understand uh, uh, necessarily some of the subtleties around voice and tone and the like. There are some recruiting applications that can be really brutal because they make inferences about somebody like, oh, they're taking too long to answer. Well, that may be a cultural thing. It may not have anything to do with the uh, individual trying to either mislead or what have you. And it could just be somebody struggling with the language is trying to respond, you know, in, to a recruiting bot on an English kind of website. So uh, you know, to, to, to your point, I've had, I've written seven books. And each one I've tried over the last 10 years to apply machine learning to all the video, all the interviews I do. I tend to have a lot of case studies in my books. And I can never get more than 80% accuracy, even now, right? And so I keep going back to a human transcriptionist. Why? Because the technology world is full of acronyms and full of accents. A lot of Indian accents, German accents, uh, Chinese accents, and so on. And so software needs to be aware that, you know, the world is still very, very, very different. Well, uh, you know, a lot of people always accuse me of having a, a, a Texas accent. And I'm always quick to point out that I don't have an accent. Y'all have accents. And, um, uh, and to that point, I use, and this is not a product plug, but I use uh, Dragon, naturally speaking, for a bunch of my computer work. And I'm much higher than your 80%. I'm way up in the 90s. And yeah, it takes a little bit of time, excuse me, uh, to uh, train it on some of the acronyms. But once you get going on it, it works real well. Uh, so I think it's improving. But again, if you're, if, you, if you're a business, you don't know who's going to be coming into your system or to your chat bots uh, from one moment to the next. And to expect that a technology can do all that for you flawlessly, I think is, um, is a mistake. Brian, I think, I think the other challenge that I think people are facing up to is the pandemic has turned the world upside down. I mean, the effect has been so haphazard that companies are reevaluating what countries are important to them. I mean, Americans can travel to more than 30 countries. That's going to affect where American companies make investments, right? So it's going to affect where people manufacture. A lot more is coming back to Western Europe and the U.S. So I, I, I think, you know, software vendors are catching a little bit of a reprieve in that as businesses rethink what countries are strategic, this time they need to be a little more aggressive in building functionality for those countries. So let's move over to some of the counsel that we would give uh, to clients. I think um, uh, I'll kick that off with, there are some companies that people ought to go look at. There's one called Papaya Global and uh, they're an Israeli firm, but they're huge in North America and all over the world. And they have come up with a model in a way to find out uh, how to not only pay people in a hundred plus countries, but they can also um, help you set up an office, set up a new uh, facility, create new banking relationships in a new country. And I often wondered, well, why haven't some of the major software companies created a version of themselves that operates kind of like Papaya? And then just this week, I saw that uh, Workday Ventures and some others just put a $40 million investment round into Papaya. And I don't think you're going to get anything out of a single vendor and a single solution. That's probably an old uh, idea that's really kind of lost its relevancy in this world today. Um, Real quick, though, let's get back on some of the specific options. There are some companies, whether, again, that could be a BPO product. Uh, some of those firms have made their bones on being a whole lot more uh, global. Uh, you, while you have some startup, uh, smaller firms like uh, the Papaya that we mentioned and maybe Blue Marble and a few others, um, there are uh, some of the majors are still struggling to have, a, let's say, a global payroll in more than about five countries. Uh, you know, so 
I get into these conversations all the time on software selections with clients who show me kind of a world map of where their operations are. And I struggle to try and figure out who's got strong product and support in some of those other areas. And that I think leads us to this deal, which is you may have to have a two tier set of solutions in your company. You don't want to hear that, but you may have to. And I think that's a very viable thing to consider. You know, that's a strategy that's been around for 20, 25 years. I mean, I remember when J.D. Edwards was getting started, their AS400 solutions worked well for second tier countries for a lot of companies. Mm -hmm. And NetSuite's been somewhat successful in that. Uh, Business One's been somewhat successful in that. So, you know, th those are clearly options. You don't have to have the big honking ERP system doing functionality for a lot of your uh, smaller markets. Well, our, our, I guess the, the last word for me, I'll let Vinny have one, is watch out, folks, when you hear vendors talk about they have a global solution or whatever. It may mean it has some global or multinational capability as long as your headquarters is in one of a handful of countries, and that may be about as far as it goes. But I think, by and large, you need to find solutions that plug and play and work with you in the different places that you operate and don't necessarily sub-optimize uh, functionality just to get the, to get some geographic coverage. Benny. Uh, you know, I have to agree with you. I mean, it's, it's the world has changed dramatically and the pandemic has turned it sideways. So reevaluate what countries are important to your customer base. Mm-hmm. And, you know, don't try to do it all yourself. Leverage all the new development that's gone on, a lot of specialists out there. So, yeah, a lot of opportunities for buyers and vendors. All right. Well, um, then I guess nothing else for us to say right now other than be careful shopping, folks. And obviously, if you need some help, I wouldn't call Vinny, but you can give me a call anytime. I'm and just kidding. Enjoy, enjoy Milano. Uh, you know, we'll yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm looking for those Pepperidge Farm cookies here, and I'm not finding them. But anyway, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Catch us next time for another issue of the Burning Platform.